Hi, uh, if you've been watching some of my previous videos uh, about my home built balloon, uh, I'll drop some links at the bottom in case you haven't. But what I've mostly focused on uh, in the last season is my flying activities. Second flight in a week. Oh, we've got another balloon inflated in the distance as well. And the build of the envelope of the balloon itself. So what I haven't talked about in any detail is the basket. While it's uh, while it's quiet this morning, before everybody gets here, I'll give you a quick tour of the kit. I'm conscious I show you lots of things in the air, but not necessarily the kit on the ground. So we've got here a Colt C2 burner, which is a sort of 1982 vintage uh, burner. I only use about half of its functionality, which is why there's some sticky tape on there. Um, this is my little basket, which was handcrafted, bespoke basket made just for the job by my friends at Corford Balloons. Um, it has a little special feature of having wheels built into it, so if I land in the middle of nowhere, I can get out quite easily. Uh, inflation fan, three and a half horsepower, just about does the job. And the envelope in the back there. This is the base of the basket, uh, wooden structure with a metal frame and a set of wires built into that structure running in this cross shape which supports my weight and the weight of the fuel when I'm in the air. Uh, this is the side wall of the basket so we don't have a woven uh, uh, wicker structure within the basket, it's just a fabric sheet which is wrapped around uh, and we can take that into position and stop it moving around while I'm in flight. A series of poles then which go between the base and the uh, frame which sits at my waist when I'm in the air. A series of poles which go between my waist and the burner which stands above my head and the firepower the burner itself. So what we'll do is we'll put all of this back into order, bring you guys down and let you have a closer look at some of the pieces of equipment that make up the basket. The first step is to turn the basket onto its back, onto its base. And we have four poles, which run between the base and three at my waist. So when I'm flying in the balloon, and we've got those cameras that you've seen on the other films of the in-flight looking down. This is the frame that you can see at the top of the basket. So, good morning. Uh, we are flying, it's uh, 10 to 7. What we'll do next is we'll pull the flying wires up from underneath the basket, pass it through some D-rings here, and you can see that structure being built. The next step in the construction is to put the fabric uh, around the outside of the basket. As we were saying before, this keeps the basket nice and lightweight. Uh, we've got no woven structure in this basket. 
uh, like a traditional hot air balloon, it's just fabric sided, uh, which because it's a home built balloon, we can experiment with things like fabric sides without any regulation. Um, so Andy's going to step in again here and we're going to start putting the uh, fabric around the outside of the basket. series of D-rings that are welded onto the top frame and the bottom frame and we've got a series of straps that we pass into place. To tighten up the fabric wall. I'm going to jump inside and do that now. Stand back and enjoy the highlights. <laughs> At the base of the basket there's a series of velcro straps and at the top there's these ratchet clips so we can put the side of the basket wall into tension. Hopefully that reduces the amount it hurts when I hit the ground. Pilots and I do time to time find myself landing in strange places. So I built a basket with wheels. Well, I've had a basket built basically with these guys with wheels, so it's pretty unique. I think it's a one off. Um, and straps in position. Right. Throw the fire extinguisher out at the same time. Three straps, uh, two to hold it at the top and one to wrap around its uh, waist, stop it falling over or rocking around when uh, the balloon is tilted on its side or when it's standing up. There's also a mark on the fuel tank which tells me which side the basket is going to be laid down on. The tank has a, a dip tube which pulls the liquid from the bottom of the tank, but when you lay the tank on its side uh, there's the possibility that it pulls vapour instead, which is not good for the burner. So it's got a marking on the side of it, so I need to adjust that into the right position. So the next stage for us is to assemble the burner, ready to go onto the basket. So we're going to take these uh, nylon rods, which have got blue markings on, which tell us which end is to the sky. We'll put those into the burner frame, turn the burner over, lift it up, put it on top of the basket, and then we'll put those all important flying wires from underneath the basket up onto the burner frame.
to keep things nice and neat and tidy, we're going to put fuel hoses into these leather strips. It's about 40 litres worth of fuel, gives me about 45 minutes of flying before I have to really be thinking about being on the ground. Uh, and as you know, a little bit of space for me to squeeze in next to it there. Got my flight back in the corner, which is just a backpack. To clip in place for the flight. And on this side, a drop line. So if I get becalmed somewhere, I can always get my team to give me a hand, throw down a rope to them, they can pull me to safety. So if you've got any questions about how it works, what it does, feel free to drop a comment at the bottom of the page and I'll see if I can answer it next time we make a video. <laughs>